Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2024. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we will be covering 2 Kings 7 through 9 and John 1 1 through 28. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation in a smooth reading of your Word so that it may be a blessing to you and for all those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, Amen. Second Kings 7 Elisha replied, Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. About this time tomorrow, a sash of the finest flour will sell for a shekel, and two sashes of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. The officer on whose arm the king was leaning said to the man of God, Look, even if the Lord should open the floodgates of the heavens, could this happen? You will see it with your own eyes, answered Elisha, but you will eat none of it. The siege lifted. Now there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They said to each other, why stay here until we die? If we say we'll go into the city and famine is in there and we will die. And if we stay here, we will die. So let us go over to the camp of the Armenians and surrender. If they spare us, we live. If they kill us, and we die. At dusk they got up and they went to the camp of the Armenians. And when they reached the edge of the camp, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the Armenians to hear the sound of chariots and horses and a great army, so that they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired the Hittites and Egyptian kings to attack us. And so they got up and they fled in the dusk and abandoned their tents and their horses and their donkeys. They left the camp as it was and ran for their lives. The men who had leprosy reached the edge of the camp and entered on one of the tents and ate and drank. And then they took silver, gold, and clothes, and went off and hid them. They returned, and they entered another tent, and they took some things from in it and hid them also. And they said to each other, Wait, we're doing what we're doing is wrong. This is a day of good news, and we are keeping it to ourselves. If we wait until daylight, punishment will overtake us. Let us go at once and report this to the royal palace. So they went and they called out to the city gatekeeper and told them, We went into the army camp and no one was there, not a sound of anyone, only tethered horses and donkeys and the tents left just as they were. The gatekeepers shouted the news and it was reported within the palace. The king got up in the night, and he said to his officers, I will tell you what the armies have done to us. And they know we are starving, and so they have left the camp to hide in the country, uh, countryside, thinking they will surely come out, and then we will take them alive and get into the city. One of his officers answered, Have some men take five of the horses that are left in the city. Their fight will be like that of all the Israelites left here. Yes, they will only be like all these, these Israelites who are doomed. And so let us send them to find out what happened. And so they selected two chariots with their horses. 
and the king sent them after the army and the army. He commanded the drivers, Go and find out what has happened. They followed them as far as the Jordan, and they found the whole road strewn with the clothing and equipment and Armenians had thrown away in their headlong flight. So the messengers returned and reported to the king. Then the people went out, and they plundered the camp of the Armenians. And so a sash of the finest flour sold for a shekel, and two sashes of barley sold for a shekel, as the Lord had said. Now the king had put the officer on whose arm he leaned in charge of the gate, and the people trampled him in the gate the gateway, and he died, just as the man of God had foretold when the king came down to his house. It happened as the man of God has said to the king, about this time tomorrow a sash of finest flour will sell for a shekel, and two sashes of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. The officer had said, to the man of God, Look, even if the Lord should open the floodgates of the heavens, could this happen? And the man of God had replied, You will see it with your own eyes, but you will eat none of it. And that is exactly what happened to him. For the people trampled him in the gateway, and he died. The Shumanites land restored. Second Kings 8 Now, Elisha had said to the woman whose son he had restored to life, Go away with your family and stay for a while wherever you can because the Lord has decreed a famine in the land that will last seven years. The woman proceeded to do as the man of God said. She and her family went away, and they stayed in the land of the Philistines seven years. At the end of the seven years, she came back from the land of the Philistines and went to appeal to the king for her house and land. The king was talking to Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, and had said, Tell me about all the great things Elisha has done. And just as Gazi was telling the king how Elisha had restored the dead to life, the woman whose son Elisha had brought back to life had came to appeal to the king for her house and land. Gehazi said, This is the woman, my lord, the king. And this is her son, whom Elisha restored to life. The king asked the woman about it, and she told him. Then he assigned an official to her case, and said to to him, Give back everything that belongs to her, including all the kin income from her land from the day she left the country until now. Hazel murders been headed. Elisha went to Damascus and been headed king of Aram was ill. And when the king was told that the man of God had come all the way up here, he said to Hazel, Take a gift with you and go to meet the man of God. Consult the Lord through him. Ask him, Will I recover from this illness? Hazel went to meet Elisha, taking him with him as a gift, forty camel loads of the finest wares of Damascus. He went in, and he stood before him, and he said, Your son Ben-Hadid, king of Aram, has sent me to ask, Will I recover from this illness? Elisha answered, 
go and say to him, You will certainly recover. Nevertheless, the Lord has revealed to me that he will in fact die. He stood at him with a fixed gaze until Hazel was embarrassed. Then the man of God began to weep. Why is my Lord weeping? asked Hazel. Because I know the harm you will do to the Israelites. He answered, And you will set fire to their fortified palace, kill their young men with the sword, dash their little children to the crown, and rip open their pregnant women. Hazel said, How could your servant, a mere dog, accomplish such a feat? The Lord has shown me that you will become king of Aram, answered Elisha. And then Hazel left Elisha and returned to his master. When Ben Hadid asked, What did Elisha say to you? Hazel replied, He told me that you would certainly recover. But the next day he took a thick cloth, soaked it in water, and spread it over the king's face so that he died. And then Hazel succeeded him as king. Jerome, king of Judea. And in the fifth year of Jerome, son of Ahab, king of Israel, when Jehoshaphat was king of Judea, Jerome, son of Jehoshaphat, became his reign as king of Judea. He was thirty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years. He followed the ways of the kings of Israel, as the house of Ahab had done. For he married a daughter of Ahab. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and nevertheless, for the sake of his servant David, the Lord was not willing to destroy Judea. He had promised to maintain a lamp for David and his descendants forever. In the time of Jerome, Adam rebelled against Judea and set up its own king. And so Jerome went to Seir and with all his chariots, the Adamites surrounded him and his chariot commanders. But he rose up and broke through by night. His army, however, fled back home. To this day, Adam has been in rebellion against Judea, whom Lebanon revolted at the same time. As for the other events of Jerome's reign, and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annuals of the kings of Judea? Jerome rested with his ancestors and was buried with them in the city of David. And Ahaziah, his son, succeeded him as king. Ahaziah, king of Judea. In the twelfth year of Jerome, son of Ahab, king of Israel, Ahaziah, son of Jerome, king of Judea, began to reign. Ahaziah was twenty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem one year. His mother's name was Athenadiel, Athelia, a granddaughter of Omari, king of Israel. He followed the ways of the house of Ahab and did evil in the eyes of the Lord, as the house of Ahab had done. For he was related by marriage to Ahab's family. Ahaziah went with Jerome, son of Ahab, to war against Hezel, king of Aram. At Ramoth in Gilead, the Aramans well uh, wounded Jerome. And so King Jerome returned to Jezreel to recover 
from the wounds the Armians had inflicted on him at Ramoth in the battle with Hazel, king of Aram. Then Ahaziah, son of Jerome, king of Judea, went down to Jezreel to see Jerome, son of Ahab, because he had been wounded. And Jehu anointed king of Israel, 2 Kings 9. The prophet Elisha summoned a man from the company of the prophets and said to him, Tuck your cloak into your belt. Take this block of a flask of olive oil with you and go to Ramoth, Gilead. And when you get there, look for Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nemeshi. Go to him, get him away from his companion, and take him into the inner room. Then take the flask and pour the oil on his head and declare, This is what the Lord says. I anoint you king over Israel. Then open the door and run. Don't delay. So the young prophet went to Ramoth Gilead. And when he arrived, he found the army officer sitting together. I have a message for you, commander, he said. For which of us? asked Jehu. For you, com commander, he replied. Jehu got up, and he went into the house. Then the prophet poured the oil on Jehu's head and declared, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I anoint you king over the Lord's people, Israel. You are to destroy the house of Ahab, your master, and I will avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the Lord's servants shared uh, said by Jezebel, the whole house of Ahab will perish. I will cut off from Ahab every last male in his in Israel, slave or free. I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and like the house of Mesha, son of Elisha. And as for Jezebel, dogs will devour her on the plot of ground at Jezreel, and no one will buy her. Then he opened the door and he ran. When Jehu went out to his fellow officers, one of them asked him, Is everything all right? Why did this man maniac come to you? You know the man and the sort of things he says, Jehu replied. That's not true, they said. Tell us. Jehu said, here is what the, he told me. This is what the Lord says. I anoint you king over Israel. They quickly looked at their cloaks and they, put, and they spread them under him on the hair steps. They spread them under him on the bare steps, and then they blew the trumpets, and they shouted, Jehu is king. Jehu kills Jerome and Ahaziah. So Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nehemiah, conspired against Jerome. Now Jerome and all Israel had been defending Ramoth, Gilead against Hazel, king of Aram. But King Jerome had returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds the Armenians had inflicted on him in the battle with Hazel, king of Aram. Jehu said, If you desire to make me king, don't let anyone slip out of the city to go and tell the news to Jezreel. And then he got into his chariot and rode to Jezreel, because Jerome was resting there at 
Ahasya, King Archidea, had gone down to see him. When the lookout standing on the tower in Jezreel saw Jehu's troops approaching, he called out, I see some troops coming. Dead a horseman, Jerome ordered, sent him to meet them and ask, Do you come in peace? The horseman rode off to meet Jehu and said, This is what the king says, Do you come in peace? We do have to, what do we have to do with peace? Jehu replied, Fall in behind me. The lookout reported, The messenger has reached them, but he isn't coming back. So the king sent out a second horseman, and when he came to them, he said, This is what the king says, Do you come in peace? Jehu replied, What do you have to do with peace? Fall in behind me. And the look out before you beat it. He has reached them, but he isn't coming back either. Mm. The driving is like that of Jehu, son of Nemesh. The driver is like a maniac. Hitch up my chariot, Jerome ordered, and when it is hitched up, Jerome, king of Israel, and Ahazia, king of Judea, rode out, each in his own chariot, to meet Jehu. They met him at the plot of ground and had built, that had belonged to Naboth, the Jezreelite. And when Jerome saw Jehu, he asked, Have you come in peace, Jehu? And how? How can there be peace, Jehu? Replied, As long as all the Okay, Jeremy, how can there be peace, Jehu replied, as long as all the idolatry and witchcraft you are mother, Jezebel abounds. And Jerome turned about and fled, calling out to Ahazi. What? Jehu replied, how can there be peace? Jehu replied, as long as all the idolatry and witchcraft of your mother, Jezebel, abound. Jerome turned about and he fled, calling out to Ahaziah, treachery, Ahaziah. Then Jehu drew his bow and he shot Jerome between the shoulders. The arrow pierced his heart and he slumped down in his chariot. Jehu said to Medicare, his chariot officer, pick up, or pick him up, throw him on the field that belongs to Naboth, the Jezreel. Remember how you and I were riding together in chariots behind Ahab, his father, and when the Lord spoke this prophecy against him, yesterday I saw the blood of Naboth and the blood of his son declares the Lord that as I will surely make you pay for it. Sorry. Pay for it on the plot of ground declares the Lord. Now then, pick him up and throw him on the plot in accordance with the word of the Lord. When Ahaziah king of Judea saw what had happened, he fled up the road to Bethlehem. And Jehu chased him, shouting, 
kill him too. too. And they wounded him in his chariot on the way up to Gerherner, Ebelon. But he escaped to Megiddo and died there. His servant took him by chariot to Jerusalem and buried him buried him with the ancestors of his tomb in the city of David in the eleventh year of Jerome son of Ahab Ahaziah had became king in Judea Jezebel killed then then Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Sorry. Jezreel killed. Then Jehu went to Jezreel. When, when Jezebel heard about it, she put on I makeup arranged her hair, and looked out of the window. As Jehu entered the gates, he asked, Have you come in peace to Zim Zimri, your murder, murder of your master? He looked up at the window, and he called out, Who is on my side? Who? Two or three urchins looked down at him. Throw her down, Jehu said, and so they threw her down, and some of her blood splattered on the wall and the horses as they trampled under her underfoot. Jehu went in and ate and drank. Take care of the cursed woman, he said and bury her, for she was a king's daughter. But when they went to, out to bury her, they found nothing except her skull, her feet, and her hands. They went back and they told Jehu, who said, This is the word of the Lord, that he spoke through his servant Elijah. The Tabishai on the plot of ground of Jezreel, dogs will devour Jezebel's flesh. Jezebel's body will be like dung on the ground in the plot of Jezreel, and so that no one will be able to say, This is Jezebel. And that was Second Kings uh, 7 through 9. Now we will be turning to John 1. The Word became flesh. John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made. That was uh, that has been made. He in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He had it as a witness to testify concerning the light. And so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. 
And though the word was made through him, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him, and yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become garden, uh, children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human desertion, or a husband will be will but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him, and he cried out, saying, this is the one I spoke about when I said, He has come after me, has, has surpassed me. Who has come? He, he who is coming after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fulfillment, we have all received grace in peace, uh, in place of grace already given. Now, for the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ, and no one has ever seen God but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father has made him known. John the Baptist denies being the Messiah. Now, this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem went, uh, sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, Then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Finally they said, Who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness, make straight the way for the Lord. And now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet. I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one uh, you do not know, and he is the one who comes after me. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. And this will all happen at Bethany, on the other side of the Jordan, and there, John, uh, where John was baptizing. And that was John 1 1 through uh, 28.
which concludes the Bible with Frisco 2024 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering 2 Kings 10 through 12 and John 1, 29 through 51. Father, I just thank you for your word, um, because without your word I could not be your messenger of the word. And so I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. I'd like to thank you folks for tuning into the Bible with Briscoe 2024 for today. And as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I. So come back and see us again tomorrow, because God willing, we will be here. And we hope that you are too. Please, like and share.